Yeah, um, you know, first off, I want to address um, the Brevin Randall situation um, and from our standpoint as a football team and, and then also um, speaking on our behalf of our program, of our team and, and for Brevin. And, and that really was brought to my attention post game Friday um, of what happened. I had no idea during the game that it happened. Um, really addressed it immediately with Coach Dimmel that night um, through a phone call. And, and uh, you know, I'm just disappointed. Initial reaction was very disappointed, just like everyone else, disappointed in the action um, and disappointed um, for a, a lot of different reasons. Um, the, the negative attention that it brought Louisiana Tech, the negative attention that it brought our football team, um, and, and the consequences that it has, and, and the disappointed in the choice um, that Brevin made. Um, Brevin has been held responsible. Um, Brevin has done um, everything we've asked him and will continue to do everything we ask him to do. He's remorseful. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, accepted responsibility um, for the wrong. And, and we're moving forward. And, and I think that um, you know, it is not defi uh, defining of our football team um, in terms of the character of our team, the character of our program. Um, you know, countless thank you notes, countless encounters with people who we travel with on the road, um, whether it's serving us food or whether it's on the plane or whether it's just in our hotels, um, just the compliments that pour out about the character um, and the integrity of our football team and the players and the young men that they are. Um, and, and so just um, have, have, never have a stronger belief in our players than now and, and who they are as people. Um, and just like everyone else, we're disappointed. Um, we're holding Brevin accountable. He's accepted responsibility. Um, and, and, and I think that from our standpoint also, you know, when you get into coaching and when I think you get into education, um, you know, our job is not to cast final judgment on, on, on an action. You know, our jo job is to hold people accountable. Um, to teach them, to hold them accountable and responsible for their actions, but it's also not to give up on people. And, and this program is certainly not going to do that with Brevin Randall, and I know his teammates aren't either. Um, and so, um, you know, with that being said, you know, I, I think everything with our statements that we've released, you know, Brevin's statement and, and, and his um, accountability to his, for his actions, um, you know, uh, and we, we've, we've handled it, and, and we're looking forward to moving forward as a program. And, and uh, you know, looking forward to, to, to showing, and I talked to him about it just through our actions, you know, who we are as a program um, in the midst of every day. And so, um, you know, with that being said, you know, our players that are here today, you know, they won't be commenting any further on the situation. We're, we're ready to move forward to Western Kentucky. Um, what's happened has happened. Um, we're very remorseful for it. We're looking forward to holding him accountable. We're moving forward. Um, we're excited about the great challenge um, of playing Western Kentucky. You know, I think we had a, 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 a really a, a courageous effort you know, from our team on, on uh, Friday night against UTEP. We started very fast on offense and special teams. Defensively, we played a strong football game. Um, and so I think that um, that was, that was a, a, the fast start was critical to our success. Um, we won a football game on the road for the first time in a very, very, very long time here at Louisiana Tech. You know, we're going to celebrate that, um, but we put that all behind us. And so now we're 2-0 in conference. We've got a great opportunity against Western Kentucky this week um, on, on a Thursday night at home, Joe IA Stadium. Um, anticipate a great, great student turnout. I anticipate a great turnout from North Louisiana um, and, and, and playing a great opponent in Western Kentucky. Tyson Helton has done a phenomenal job there. Tyson Summers, their defensive coordinator, um, does a great job. He creates havoc on their defense. They lead the country in takeaways. Um, and Drew Hollingshead coming over from Mississippi State, worked with Mike Leach for a long time on offense, um, has fit, fit in great there from their standpoint on offense. Um, and so um, it's going to be a big challenge for our football team. And uh, both of our quarterbacks have practiced this week. Um, you know, we're trying to get Hank back in terms of his shoulder. Um, he's, we're both practicing. Um, and so um, it's been a good week from that standpoint. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to moving forward as a program and, and uh, looking forward to the challenge of Western Kentucky. Yeah, they're aware of it, and we definitely talk about it to our players um, in our team meetings starting this week, and just the importance because the importance for us is, is, is regardless of whether it was Western Kentucky or Middle Tennessee, who we play next week, and or actually this week, um, if you if you look at it from the standpoint of on Tuesday, um, we play two games this week, so we got an opportunity to, get, to try to challenge to try to get to 4-0 um, in our conference, and so that's why it's important for us because we're 2-0 in conference now. Um, we look forward to the challenge of trying to get to 3-0. Um, it's a home game. We always want to play well at home and defend our home turf. Um, Western Kentucky has done a phenomenal job in this conference, you know, um, for a long time. Um, they're a very, very, very talented team. You know, they have the, the, the preseason players of the year on offense and defense, Austin Reed and, and the Jaquez um, Evans, and they live up to it. Um, they live up to it. And, and uh, um, so we'll definitely have our hands full come Thursday night. 
Uh, not a great deal. No, it does not. Yeah, I think it's just depending on practice and just kind of as we go through the week, you know, leading up to Thursday. Well, you know, we've had to adjust in terms of the time when we practiced. Um, and I think you also have to look at how you, the volume of things that you do in practice um, and, 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 and the running that you do. Because the ultimate goal is for our players to be fresh, um, for them to be excited to play a football game on Thursday night. And, and we love, like, the practice is really what dictates, you know, your practice execution is really your game day reality. Um, we love practice. I love practice. Um, and, and, and I think some of our players really love to practice. But our players really love to play the game. And so they, you know, you, you frame it from that standpoint. If, if you get to you get to play two games in a in a week, um, and and so that that's what they really like to do. But we've got to be smart coaching wise and how we take care of our our, our players. Um, you know, preparation. You've got to get a certain number of reps on your plays to give yourself a chance to execute at a high level, uh, because that's ultimately what we want to do on this stage. Is is we want to execute at a high level. We want to play well on special teams, defense, and offense. Um, we want to have a great sideline, and and really to do those things, you have to have a lot of energy, and I think an excitement. And so I think that the team that is the most excited to play, um, I think, has, a, has, a, has an upper hand. And so um, being able to try to inspire your team on um, short weeks, um, and there's a lot of different things that goes into it. But our players have handled it very well. Our practice last night I thought was very intentional. Um, I, I think they came out with, with an, an intent to, to prepare really well on a short week. What's that? You know, I think it's just trying to find a game plan that attacks who we're playing and, and, and whoever's at quarterback, you know, whoever's at running back, at receiver, offensive line. You have to evaluate your personnel every single week. Um, you have a base system that you start off with, uh, but then you also evaluate, all right, who are you going against and, and, and how can you put your guys in the best position to be successful in the plan of attack. And, you know, last week, the plan of attack, you know, some of the things that you have to think about is, is we knew we had a short week coming up. And so, um, you know, the, the way that you played the football game on Friday night, you know, also some of those thought processes go into it just from the standpoint of hey, if you can get up in the game quick early like we did, um, you know, we've got to play better in the, in the middle of the game on offense. There's no question. Um, but also you'd like to try to shorten games um, just from the standpoint of if you have the upper hand, you know you're playing another game in about six days. And so let's try to shorten this thing. And, and maintain our lead, um, but also be, be, be smart with how you handle the football game um, from that standpoint. No, it was. It was, it was, it was a surprise to me. And, and, of course, you know, I think it's a credit to Smoke and, and, and our strength conditioning staff, Coach Scholes, um, where he, he finally got long speed. He finally didn't get hawked down. And so his teammates uh, really enjoyed giving him a hard time about that uh, in our team meeting. But, um, you know, I, I think when you watch that punt return, um, I think it's a, it's a credit to a lot of, a lot of uh, blocks that we had. You know, a lot of the time Smoke makes about 100, he makes about 10 people miss. And finally, the 11th guy runs him down, I guess. Um, but in this case, you know, you look out there and, and you've got guys that are, that are in, in, in teach tape, um, shadow technique on punt defense. Um, they're a teach tape double team. Um, and so there's a lot of things from a coaching standpoint that our players did a phenomenal job executing on our punt defensive unit. And, you know, Coach Sharp talks a lot about on special teams getting the pieces of the puzzle right um, in terms of personnel. And I think we've made some really good strides on kickoff return and also on punt defense and getting the right pieces there um, from the standpoint of being able to execute what we call. You know, I, I, I don't know the volume of reps that they'll have on, on, uh, on Thursday. But I, I do anticipate those guys dressing and, and being available. Yeah, it, it'll just depend on the week of practice, really, with Marquise, you know, and, and, and see how it feels for him and, and in terms of the workload and work, building him back up. Well, I, I think, you know, the natural arm talent that he has, he has a, an unbelievable release. He gets the ball out very quick. Um, he's very accurate. Um, I think you can tell just by watching him the confidence he has in himself, the confidence that he has in what he's doing. I think he fits the scheme and Helmer really immersed together really well. He understands what he's trying to get accomplished within the scheme um, and gets the ball out to his playmakers. He throws the ball down the field really well. He's very hard to sack. I think he's only been sacked three times this year. 
Um, and, he, and, he, and he's very accurate. And I think that he's, he's, very, he's a really good athlete in terms of when they ask him to run the football, um, he runs with toughness in short yardage situations. So um, I think that he's, he, he does a great job within their offense. He's extremely talented. He's very accurate, quick release. And you can tell he has a great grasp for what they're trying to get accomplished on offense within his scheme. Yeah, Malachi Corley is one of the best receivers in our league. The running back, Poindexter, is a very good player. Um, they have some talent and skill positions on offense. Um, you know, from a defensive standpoint, man, they're, they're just so they're so multiple with what they do. Um, they're, they're they're a very blitz heavy football team. Um, you know, like I said, um, I think it's Jaquise Evans is, is number three is the the preseason player of the year on defense, and you can see why through the first um, few games that they played. Um, you know, Aaron Key, a linebacker, number 15, Upton Stout, number 21, a corner. Um, those guys are really good players. They play a physical style of football. Um, and, and, and then you have a ton of respect watching how they play. We talk about it all the time that the, the Epson doesn't lie. And, and you watch them, and, and they play with an edge. They play really hard, and they play well together. And so um, those are things that we're trying to, to get in our program. And there's times, and, and a lot more times than not this year than where we've done that as a football team. And, and we'll, we'll have to do that Thursday night. Yeah, we haven't really got into that right now. Um, it's amazing to think that after this, uh, a week from today, we've had eight games and we only got four left. Um, that, that, that's really the reality that sets in for our football players and our team is that um, after this week's over with, and I'm talking about when we get through next Tuesday, you know, we've only got four football games left on the schedule. And, and so I think that there's how fast things go in, in college football and how fast our season's gone in particular with our unique schedule. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, really just focus on a daily basis of, of, of trying to get a great practice tonight on Tuesday night and, and put ourselves in a great position um, to have success on Thursday. Is that it? Yeah. Thank, you Thank you guys.